when I was in my 20s, I used to volunteer for this really big church back in California. And I worked in the middle school department. So it was like sixth, seventh, eighth graders. And I loved it. Loved working with middle school kids. And I gave my heart and soul to that ministry every single week. But while I was working for them and giving my heart and soul to them every single week, there wasn't a whole lot that the church was doing for me. Like they weren't pouring into me, they weren't helping me or equipping me very much. And turns out it was really because I was single. You know, the church had a lot for married people. Had marriage classes, marriage seminars, marriage sermon series, you know, go on a couples retreat, small group for young marrieds. But for single people, they didn't really offer a lot. In fact, they only had one thing. And it was a Bible study. Uh, it was a Sunday school class on Sunday morning and it was called Potter's Clay. And people were saying, oh, you gotta go to Potter's Clay. So I went to Potter's Clay. Uh, the very first day I said to myself, wow, this group is, this is not for me. Because, well, for one, the people in that class, they were like twice as old as me. And second, the people were just sad. They were just sad people. And it was through that experience that I learned, you know, people aren't always single because they want to be. Sometimes singleness is the result of a broken relationship. You know, people are single because they got a divorce. People are single because they broke up. People are single because their spouse died. But just because you're married, that doesn't mean that everything is peaches and roses and skipping through a field of daisies while listening to the sound of music. I mean, people who are married, they have issues too. People who are married, there's brokenness there as well. But the thing about being married and admitting that there's an issue is it's perfectly okay to say that you have a problem, to say that you need prayer or that you have some darkness in your life, but it's not always socially acceptable to say that your marriage is in trouble or that your marriage needs prayer because then in effect you're also throwing your spouse under the bus back in Jesus's day when a couple got married they got married under the hoopa and what the hoopa was is it's a prayer shawl that the rabbi wore around his neck and the couple would go through their marriage vows and then after the arrangement was made the rabbi would take his shawl off and hand it to two other people they would then hold the hoopa over the couple and it would make a tent it would make like a little house and the symbolism was that God's love and God's care and God's protection and God's healing covered that couple it's a really beautiful picture it's a great symbol but here's my question do married couples still need to stand under the hoopah today absolutely but is there room under the hoopah for single people? I think so. You know, just like I was saying, people aren't always single because they want to be. Sometimes singleness is the result of a broken relationship. Jesus, when he came to earth, that was one of the things he came to do, to heal broken relationships. This Sunday at Walden Church, we're going to talk about the fact that Jesus was a rabbi and that Jesus wore a prayer shawl. And there were people who thought that there was healing, miraculous power in that garment that he wore. We're going to take some scriptures from the Old Testament, some scriptures from the New Testament, stick them together, and we're going to make a really incredible observation. I hope to see you there.